What's up YouTube, for today's video we have a full overpowered Gen 3 Pokemon team. So we've done Gen 1, we've done Gen 2 and now it's time for the Gen 3. So obviously these will only be Gen 3 Pokemon, so in before the comments saying, why isn't there a Snorlax there? That is why people. Alright, thank you to all the people that uh, rocked up for last night's battle stream. Hope you guys had a good time. Tonight, we're going to be streaming too. We're going to do some shiny hunting, some chill. Hope you guys can come along to that. Thank you to all the people who have subscribed so far. Uh, link is in the description there. Twitch TV slash uh, YT if you want to come along. Make sure you do. Probably be uh, starting about an hour after this video goes live. So open that second tab if you're a little bit late to the video. And come and join the salt. We normally go for, uh, you know, three or four hours. Okay, we have a battle on my Discord. This was against Sarge. And boy, this first battle was really, really interesting to say the least. Now, the question for today is, what do you think is the most overpowered Gen 3 Pokemon? Please leave it below in the comment section. Of course, I'm not including legendaries in these videos either, unless I state it. Okay, let's see if we can shoot for a thousand likes on this video, people. If you enjoy these theme teams and you want to show some support, hit that like button for some love. Okay, so this was a quite a scary lead. This was a Honchkrow with Night Slash, and it also had Super Luck as well. Now, the Pokemon that actually brought, a lot of them really... A few of them actually ran kind of weak to this Pokemon, so I had to kind of watch out to see what I was doing here. So I went to my Swamp Pit, it's going to get critted by the uh, Night Slash, and now the Honchkrow is going to be able to go for the Brave Bird, which is going to be enough to take out my Swamp Pit. Now, I can't really explain my Pokemon sets uh, too much in this first battle, but I'm going to try and I'll definitely explain them in the second battle, so make sure you stick around for the second one. You'll get to see why in a moment. Uh, they don't get a hell of a lot of use. So we got my Claydol coming back in. I thought, well, I might be able to live this uh, Night Slash badly because I'm a fairly bulky set. And uh, I'm going to get critted anyway. I was actually going to go for a rest there to stall out the Toxic a little bit more. But uh, my dreams are crushed there by the Honchkrow. Now, I guess the only good thing that came out of this was the Honchkrow wasn't Moxie. Okay, so we got the Tailwind uh, leaving and we're going to swap in the Salamance here. I'm also going to give a brief explanation as to why I included these Pokemon in my team. Okay, so let's go with uh, the Claydol. So Claydol uh, in Gen 3, it was a very nice spinner and also had the Levitator ability, which was nice. So that gave it immunity like Earthquake and Stone Edge uh, with its typing. It was bulky and uh, it also had some uh, nice offensive moves as well. Now, we've got the Swampert. Now, Swampert obviously had really nice typing too. It saved the grass four times weakness. It was also you know, a nice uh, counter for a lot of the physical uh, type Pokemon. Uh, around that generation too and uh, it had nice bulk about it now you got to remember there were special moves and physical moves so they were swapped up a lot so some physical moves now were special moves back then anyway so we got uh, primarini coming in then there's no way i want to keep my salamander to that so going into my metagross now we've got a z move here now this is primarini's a z move and why that and why that tsunami is getting dropped on me i'm going to tell you the other pokemon so salamander salamander was the king of third gen basically had, it was an amazing Dragon Dance Sweeper. Had a great ability to intimidate. Um, it could, it had, you could run like multiple sets, uh, like mix, physical. It was it was really good too. Uh, it could even have a bit of bulk as well. So uh, rather, uh, definitely probably the best uh, sweeping Pokemon in Gen 3 in my opinion. Okay, so we got Metacross. Metacross hit really, really hard. It had excellent typing. No four times weaknesses. Man, it, it was an absolute beast back then. Anyway, so uh, it's going to take a little bow, but I've got my Assault Vest on my Metagross. I'm going to be able to go to the set. I'm going to be able to go over these sets a lot better in the second battle. You know, as I'll, I'll try and explain the first battle why these Pokemon are on this team uh, in this video, and then in the second battle, I'll kind of explain their sets a little bit more. Okay, so we got uh, Ariel going for the Sparkling Scum against my Flounder. I mean, my Metagross, and that one is down. I've watched the little memo for ages. So we've got uh, only three Pokemon left, and things are not looking good at all, people. So we're going to go into Flygon. Now, Flygon um, was a, you know, a pretty uh, decent Pokemon, too. Now, we've got, uh, firstly, it's got the Levitate. It's also got good immunities as well to Electric. Uh, we also got, uh, it's, it's actually, it was a very solid check to a lot of Pokemon uh, in that meta game. So you guys got to remember, like, the meta changed a lot from since, you know, definitely Gen 3 to Gen 6 for, like, tons and tons of reasons, right? It was also had a nice, uh, you know, speed stat, and you could run it mixed as well. It was rather nice as a mixed set. Anyway, so my Flygon's going to go down, unfortunately, and uh, now we've got the Primarina swapping out, and we've got the big Steelix coming in. So going for the Earthquake, I was actually going to try and finish off the Primarina and get a Moxie boost, but to no avail. Steelix taking that one really, really nicely. Steelix has got amazing uh, defense run. So at the moment, I've only got two Pokemon left, and I've only taken one down. So things are... Guys, things aren't looking very hunky dory at the moment. So we got the Mega Steelix uh, digivolving there. Man, there wasn't, there was just nothing I could do to this team. They really, really counted me uh, well. So going for another earthquake. Um, I was only really.
really worried about an Ice Fang from Steelix. Apart from that, I actually wasn't worried too much at all. I, I was confident I could live a Gorobo badly. Uh, however, it's going to go for the Rock Tomb. Now, Rock Tomb is super effective, and it also is going to drop my speed. So I really do need my speed, and uh, I've got to swap my Salamance out here. There's no, you know, there's no real option there to not. So I'm going to go into my Milotic now. So I think I've gone over all of them except for Milotic. So Milotic. Milotic was a very tanky Pokemon. Had some nice offense too. And uh, it was just very, very bulky. It had like that Recover, uh, you know, a Marvel scale. It was very, very tanky. And, you know, it was... I, I just remember seeing them all the time back then too. I remember this one trainer, right? You versed earlier on in uh, Ruby Sapphire Emerald. It had Water Pulse and it was, it was raining in the area, right? It just destroyed... Do you guys remember that trainer? Man, I got destroyed by them the first time I versed them. Okay, so anyway, we got the Steelix swapping out there and we got the... Uh, I nearly called that uh, Manetric Dem. We got the uh, Minum coming in. They both start with M, all right? It's close enough. So going for the Hydro uh, Pump that gets the Minum there. It does pretty good damage. Now, Minum surprisingly has some nice special defense. And that's going to go for the Nuzzle. So I like, okay, Nuzzle, that's interesting. Um, that's not going to do too much damage to my Milotic. Now, I've got to note that that has Nuzzle as well. So now we've got uh, the Thunderbolt coming from the Minum. Now, uh, Milotic's got some nice uh, bulk. But this was a sweeping set, so I was definitely going to go down to that one. But uh, as said, guys, more on these sets uh, as we get into the second battle. Okay, so since my last Pokemon is Salamance, and uh, I thought this would be a prime opportunity to start see if we can get back into this game. So we got the uh, Miner swapping out, and we got the Delmise coming in. Now, I almost went for the Dragon Rush there. I thought, no, nah, I don't want to miss against the Minum because it might have, like, Hidden Power Ice and take me up. So uh, the Earthquake's going to do nothing to Delmise. Now this uh, set, we can actually, I'll actually be able to go over what the Salamance set is because it gets the most action out of all the Pokemon in my battle. So we got Max Attack, we got Max Speed. I actually get a Dragon Rush critical hit there, which definitely mattered on the Delmise. Delmise is going to go for a Banded Shadow Claw, I believe. And that is going to grant me a Moxie boost. So this was Home Claws, Dragon Rush, Iron Tail and Earthquake. Um, a quite a fun set to run, uh, something a little bit different from the normal Dragon Dance one. And uh, if, oh, given the opportunity, very, very, uh, very, very dreadful to come across against. So we got the Magmortar coming in, it's going to go down to the Earthquake. And obviously, on upon each kill, that crit totally mattered. And uh, that's going to get a plus one in attack every time. I ran Jolly Nature on this as well. Obviously, Home Claws and Moxie giving me all the attack boosts I needed. Now, Home Claws also made up for the accuracy on Dragon Rush and Iron Tail. Dragon Rush for Stab. I call that Dragon Rush. Uh, Drake, guys, Dragon Rough. It's when you get rough. Um, we got Iron Tail for Fairy types, and we got uh, Earthquake just for Skill types. Uh, works really, really nicely. So my name's obviously going to go down to that one. Now we got two Pokemon left. We got the Primarina, and we got the uh, Steelix left. So at this point, I've got a ridiculous amount of Moxies up, and you guys can probably guess uh, what's going to happen here. The Primarina is not going to be able to outspeed me. The Mega Steelix is not going to be able to outspeed me, and uh, that one is pretty much game. So I think that was five one at one point. So a uh, very, very strong fight. Definitely the best Pokemon I had on my team. Uh, I did try and make it an interesting, uh, you know, kind of interesting set, though, with Home Claws. A lot of their normal sets, uh, like the Dragon Dance one, which works pretty interesting, too. Now, uh, Salamence, as I said, in Gen 3 could run, like, a mixed set as well. Like, and then in Gen 4, right, that, that mixed Mence was very, very popular and uh, even creeped this way into Ubers, which was quite interesting. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the Mega Silex down. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this absolute turnaround of a battle. I never got to explain any of my other Pokemon because Salamence basically did a sweep then. Okay, um, that was obviously that only happened because I got a crit on the uh, Delmise as well. If not, it would have been, uh, you know, it definitely would have been a dead game. Let's get into the second battle anyway. So we got uh, Arachnid as the lead, which really actually did wall my team. This is a battle against Wolfram on my Discord. So let's go over what these sets were this time. I gave you my reasoning for each Pokemon. Now, um, I, I just gave a brief explanation too. I did obviously you couldn't include everything. So on this Milotic set, I try to make all these sets fairly, I guess, a little bit more competitive than usual. But uh, still, you know, I still added my little flair to it. So we've got Max Special Attack and Max Speed. I'm running a sweeping one this time. We've got Psyche MZ Hypnosis. So that's going to boost my speed by one stage. I gave it Modest Nature. And uh, I've got Ice Beam, Hydro Pump, and Mirror Coat there. Um, with its decent bulk, it could actually live, uh, you know, electric types, type attacks really, really uh, badly and get a Mirror Coat KO off. Okay, so there wasn't a lot into my team that actually could take this thing out or even do much damage to us. So I thought, okay, let's swap in Salamance again. Okay, so I thought, well, I might be able to set a Home Claws up against this and uh, see if we could do, you know, the same thing as we did the last battle. Okay, so getting a nice swap in, and in comes the Stress Ball. I was very, very stressed. I, well, I, I think they'd be a little bit more stressed than I would be because I just got a plus one in attack and accuracy. 
Okay, so we got the Vennet. I'm going to go for the Dragon Rush on the Vennet. Now, Vennet was obviously going to be an Everlight set there. It actually tanks out really nicely. Very nice, that Vennet set there. Now, we got the Stun Spore going on to the Salamence. Now, Salamence, I forgot to say, my item was Lumberry. I remember a lot back in the day. It actually, you could actually run leftovers on it too. Uh, then it kind of merged into the Yaki Berry Life Orb in Gen 4. Man, those Gen 4 days were crazy. Anyway, so I'm going to go for the Dragon Rush. That's going to take out the Venonat uh, with a two-hit KO. So getting a Moxie boost here. So things are looking absolutely amazing. I had a plus two in attack, a plus one in accuracy. So out comes the Shuckle, right? So they go, okay, well, I can go for the Iron Tail here. This is going to do some solid damage to Shuckle. Uh, Shuckle, I know, does have Sturdy. It doesn't take it down to a Sturdy, but damn, son, it does a lot of damage. Okay, so the Shuckle's going to go for the Power Split. Um, that's not too much of a problem. I'm going to get another Moxie boost after this, so I'm sort of like, okay, that's that's kind of meh. That's fine. I can at least take that out and get another plus one in attack. So down goes the uh, Shuckle. we still got the Arachnid left, which is not going to come in. That's already asleep. I know that I can take that out. Okay, so now we've got the pincer coming in. So you guys are probably thinking, oh, this is going to be an easy battle. But uh, as you guys know, things always escalate. Okay, so anyway, we've got the uh, mega pincer called Pinsault. Uh, it's going to come here. Now, on this set, I had uh, I had Dragon Rush. As you guys know, I got Iron Tail. As you know, th Basically, I was using Dragon Rush all the time. So go for Dragon Rush. Now, the good thing about Dragon Rush, it actually does have a chance to flinch as well. It's not going to take it out. And they've got Guillotine on there. Guys, the Friday video, this epic Salamance Friday video is uh, coming to a close. I'm sure I can get a sweep on that one. It's not not too hard. Anyway, so down goes my Salamance and a Salty Rage, and we're going to bring in the Metagross. Now, Metagross is absolutely amazing, uh, you know, physical attacking. You know, it's Meteor Mash, it's Typing, uh, you know, Dark Type wasn't like, you know, it's not like Dark Types were good against it or neutral to it anymore, and it had no four times weakness at all. Okay, uh, so we're going to go for the Icy Wind. This was a special set. Let's go over this one. So we got max health, max special attack. We got the assault vest. I've got psychic flash cannon. You can actually could run psychic on Metagross in third gen. There was some actual uh, benefits from doing that as well. Uh, we got flash cannon. Uh, so I went with like a, a you know, special set due to that reason. So we got psychic flash cannon, icy wind, and hidden power ground. We got the ability as clear body too. Okay, so now this scissor came in right. I was in a very comfortable position. So we got the scissor going for the focus energy. I'm like, okay, that's going to boost its critical hit ratio. Now I can go for the hydro pump. Acid just jumped at my door then. So the hydro pump hits. So I was like, okay, that's really good. That's going to do some solid damage to scissor. Scissor is fairly bulky. So now it's going to go for the bug bite. I was like, oh, well, I'm definitely not going to leave a critical hit bug bite technician from scissor. There's, there's no way, people. Okay, so uh, my Malatic goes down to a million damage, and uh, I'm going to bring him a Claydol. So I thought, mm, I might be able to take this out with the, I should be able to take this out with the Earth Power right now at speed, and, you know, that'll be this problem gone. So go for the Earth Power on the Scissor, and it just loops. And now the Scissor's going to hit me with another Bug Bite, and it's going to do like a million damage to me. Oh, my Claydol. I didn't get, actually even get to say uh, what that was. So I kind of built it around the um, the uh, third gen set. So we've got Max Health, Max uh, the Special Defense. We got Toxic Rest, Sleep Talk, and Earth Power. I was going to give it Rapid Spin, but I thought, no, nah, I'm going to go with the Sleep Talk Rest set. We got the item as leftovers. Okay, so going for the Earth Power on my Flygon. This was a special Flygon since you could run like a, a mixed one uh, kind of well uh, all the way back then. So I went with the uh, Choice Spec set. Now, this one's a nice surprise uh, surprise factor. It's a little bit underwhelming in this gen, however. Okay, so in comes the big spider. I had nothing to actually do against this. Uh, we got on the fly gun, we had Fire Blast, Earth Power, Draco Meter, and Giga Drain, Elevitate, and Choice Specs. Max Speed, Max Special Attack. Okay, so we're going to go with the Swamp Earth. There's not much I can do. I've got Max Health, Max Attack. Now, my best attack there is Earthquake, Waterfall, you know, as my main stabs. All the rest are not going to do too much of it. Okay, so it's going to go for the Liquidation, doing a lot of damage to my Swamp Earth. Uh, even with my nice max health and max defense, it's, you know, it's hitting me pretty well. So I've got Ice Punch and Hammer Arm as the last two moves, and we've got the Choice Band as the item, and Torrent as the ability. Okay, so he's getting a flinch there on the Waterfall, which is absolutely beautiful. Now I was thinking, well, it did get some more leftovers damage. We've seen what kind of damage it's already doing. I'm confident that it's going to be able to live, so I actually needed another flinch here to actually take it out. Of course it's going to live, and uh, now we've got the Liquidation coming from the Arachnid, and uh, that is going to take out my Swampert. Quite an interesting Pokemon rack, and it uh, you know can do like quite a few things. Anyway, it's it's very very it's you know it's very um it's very bulky too, on especially on the special defensive side. Okay, so now we're going to go to Metagross. I'm going to go for the Psychic and take this thing out. Even though uh, Metagross' special attack is you know basically trash, it's on a low amount of health for me to take out, which is good. Okay, so that one's down. Now we've got one more Pokemon remaining. Now this was actually quite an interesting uh, matchup. 
So we got the, uh, we got the, uh, I nearly called it a moth on them. We got the owl moth coming in. Insert those moth memes, people. So, uh, I was like, okay, well, there's not really too much I can do. I could go for the icy wind against this. Uh, you know, drop its speed a little bit in case it's going to go for a quiver dance or a bug buzz or something like that. So that's going to go for an ominous wind. It actually crits me through my assault vest. I was like, okay, that's that's kind of fine. Uh, the only thing I was worried about if it did actually get a boost, so that would be a problem. So I thought, well, the best thing for me to do would be actually drop its speed. I've got that Flygon in the back too, which could be handy. So go for another icy wind on the Masquerade. I didn't actually have a really a hell of a lot to hit it with, and uh, it's going to get some more speed drops on it. So I thought that's good. That's going to be nice for my Flygon, since if you guys remember, Flygon was running a special set, right? So uh, anyway, it's going to get an ominous wind boost. Now, this is bad, people, because my Flygon was running a special set, and uh, I know what moves this can actually have, too, uh, on the special side. So anyway, go for another Icy Wind. I thought, oh, well, I've got to do, I've got to just drop this thing speed again, and then I'm going to start going for Flash Cannon against it, because that's going to be, you know, do a little bit more damage to it, or so some kind of move that's going to do a bit more damage uh, than the Icy Whip. So we got another Ominous Wind on my Metagross. One more is actually going to take me out. I was really, really scared if it actually got another one there, because that would get, like, super bulky. Okay, so going for a uh, Flash Cannon, uh, hoping for a Special Defense drop, but that wasn't going to be the case, and Motham, I mean Masquerin, they're both Moths, is going to take me out with the Ominous Wind. So down goes my Metagross. Now, the only Pokemon, I, the only move I could really do against this thing was Fire Blast. Draco Meteor was way, 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 way too risky. So I thought, Fire Blast, super effective, let's roll with that, right. Earth Power's going to do nothing, Giga Drain was going to do nothing. They lived on one hump! The, guys, the merch is available if you want the Salt merch. They hit me up in the uh, link is in the description. Uh, thank you to all the people that bought the merch already. Someone did buy a salt mug uh, yesterday. Thank you so much for that. If I had missed that second fire blast, right, I would have I would have been so salty. Thank you for that battle, guys. Hope you enjoyed these. Check out those bloopers. See you at stream. Peace.